Welcome to a world where particles, vibrations, and light collide. A place where leading industry experts and healers come together to discuss controversial topics that will challenge your beliefs and expand your mind. From quantum physics to metaphysics, no topic is off limits, but this is not your typical podcast. I'd like to know if you could give us some uh, pointers on dealing with the triggers. Well, remember, you can't get triggered unless you have a belief that you can be triggered, right? The triggers happen when we feel like we have no control. The triggers happen when we feel like we're a victim. The triggers happen when we feel like somebody's in our space, right? Those are all triggers. And so if you understand, if you're able to stay in the space of, it's an interesting thought you've got. It's a show guaranteed to make you question your assumptions and push you to expand your horizons. For those who are already fascinated or passionate about the work of Patty Conklin, this show will give you an inside look into the mind of one of the industry's most renowned figures in vibrational mediation. With over 28 years of experience and a long list of big name collaborations, Patty's insights and perspectives will inspire and challenge even the most seasoned practitioners. And if you're the skeptic who doesn't believe in vibrational mediation, this show is for you. Healers, doctors, and scientists are just a few of the professions represented by our fascinating visitors that bring their unique perspective to every episode. Join us on this journey into the world of healing within and adventure inside. Our mission is to inspire, challenge, and enlighten our audience with thought-provoking conversations and fascinating guests from a wide range of fields who can shed new light on important issues facing society today. Join us for each episode if you're ready to explore and learn about the latest developments at the intersection of cutting-edge science, spirituality, and self-improvement. Enter a world where waves, particles, and light all meet. Enter the world of healing within and adventure inside. Dr. Hall has been a good friend, a colleague. A, um, she's a wonderful musician, um, but she knows her stuff. And, and she knows it not only from a Western medicine uh, point of view, but from a holistic uh, medical standpoint as well. And I got to say, I think maybe I played a little bit of a part in how she shifted to finally believing, because honestly, we were neighbors mm -hmm. for many years. And uh, I think it was about two years into being neighbors before she was finally like ready to talk to me about this kind of stuff. <laughs> And she was pretty skeptical, and I was. Um, and and we had from that moment on. Um, yeah, I was know, a believer. Yeah, after my session, after your session, yeah. and then we started working together with uh, clients and so forth. And and she has just gone in places that I have never gone to. Um, and so, and I have to say, you have played a huge role in my understanding of the realm beyond what we perceive to be real mm. and tangible yeah and how that is really important for our health and wellness and um and with md wellness solutions you know now i i don't have your gift but it you is your own it, gift it, but yeah. it, but it's addressing yeah some of these underlying things that are so um uh, critical yeah. for a person to really become well. Um, and so I do have to thank you for opening my eyes to that and, um, and having um, seen the benefits of addressing emotional stuff. Yeah. It, it has been phenomenal. Yeah. And it is, I can't stress how important it is for anyone wanting to be well, right. to address the emotional and I think spiritual. Sure. And I don't mean in Absolutely. a religious way, right? but um, we are spiritual beings. Yes. We try to ignore it, um, but we all know it. I think innately we know it. Right. And, um, and so with, MD Wellness Solutions, I'm able to really incorporate that in a way that I was not able to do in a in my 
clinical practice. Right. Uh, because right. that was, you know, seven minutes. Yeah. Got to run them through. Yeah. And, um, and that's not really caring for people. Right. And, and it's not, it's not teaching them how to care for exactly. themselves. Exactly. Right. Exactly. What, what was, what was the, uh, um, what was the analogy, the, the metaphor you were using? Um, oh, if, uh, if the your body that you're going to do a show, no, oh, that you're going to do a show oh, on, she's, oh, she's going to have I've her never, own segment yes, on yes. this. Whack-a-mole medicine. <laughs> I love that. You know, symptom pops up, whack. <laughs> for the drug symptom pops up whack another drug that that's the seven minute model that um i was working in that and is that yeah. really is it, not effective no 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 you know i think that that um you know western medicine definitely has its place absolutely I, you know i i i really encourage people to understand and and think about the fact that we need both. We need we need Western medicine at times, and other times we need self care. We need supplements. We need um, cool. exercising. We need to be able to take that alternative, complementary, and and blend it in. Yeah, we well the first step is that we need to own our own health, wellness. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. yeah. and there are things the physiology of the human body that we know are effective. Right. We need to eat a healthy diet. Right. We need to exercise. We need sleep. We, we know this. I just came up with something really awesome. <laughs> I did. I have never thought of this before. When she said we need to own, and I'm thinking own our wellness now. Yes. That's my new acronym. Yes. Our wellness now. Yes. We're owning. You know, because we'll own it. You know, as a with with any of our clients, we call out the play. Yeah. Very true. It's up to them to run it. Yep. Yep. Because we can't do it for anyone. That is so true. You know, and so um, but I can't do it in a seven minute office visit. Right. And right. so MD Wellness Solutions um is set up so that i have lots of time working with people to help them understand yeah. more about what's underneath their issues right and give them exercises and things to do to help them get rid of their limiting beliefs yeah. replace them with yeah. vibrant life affirming beliefs yeah. that directly impact health Let's let's talk about that because we both have um we'll both have clients and and that come in with a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And um and their whole world is fearful and anxiety ridden. Um the what ifs that just come to mind constantly and the stagnation that just ends up just kind of polarizing you and not being willing to step outside of your box and step into new adventures. Frankly, I like new adventures. Me too. I think new adventures are cool. I think, you know, I encourage people to experience them because you can't fail. All you do is find out that maybe that wasn't something you wanted to do and then you move on to the next one, right? We don't have to look at it as a failure. But people... And I know some of you go through it as well that are watching us today, go through that fear and anxiety. So, so for me, I look at fear as forgetting every available resource. And that's that piece of the universe, the piece of God, whatever you want to call it, that's deep inside of you, that is a resource that you can call on at any time to help you get through a situation that maybe is uncomfortable that just feels like it's off. Um, a lot of people will use those feelings as an excuse not to go forward because, they're like, oh, it doesn't feel good. Well, is it that it really doesn't feel good? Or is it that you're so fearful that you're going to use that excuse to not do it? Mm -hmm. So how do you coach people and talk to people about their fear and anxiety level? Well, I start, since I'm an allopathic, that's my sort of foundation uh -huh. training. Um, I point out to people that fear and, and anxiety has a detrimental physical effect 
on your body. Now, fear, you know, you're walking and a dog jumps out at you and you're fearful that reaction in your body. Well, you need that because you need to get away from the dog. Yeah. And so your body gets your heart rate up, your eyes dilate, um, your body stops digesting food, it shifts uh, sugar to your muscles and helps you get out of there or right. fight. Right. Okay. Fight or flight. You need that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But fear and anxiety triggers the same physiologic response chronically. And when those chemicals and hormones are released in the body in a chronic way, it wears your body out. It's detrimental to your immune system, your blood pressure, your pulse, your weight, you know, that stress yeah. hormones, you know, helps people gain weight. You're at right. higher risk for diabetes. There's all sorts of detrimental things that happen from that chronic fear stress cycle. Yeah. And so I try to point out to people that a, being fearful and anxious is detrimental to your health so that there is more motivation to, to do the work to get out of that fear and out of that anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Because it's contributing to all sorts of negative things that you really don't want. True. And so, you know, for, you know, for me, if I know that I'm doing something that's bad for me, I have a I have better chance of changing my behavior. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, so that's where I start. Yeah. Unless it comes to chocolate. Well, but chocolate's good for you. <laughs> I had to bring it in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chocolate relieves stress chocolate, and anxiety. Chocolate relieves yeah. stress and anxiety. But there, there yeah. are, uh, you know, dark chocolate sure. has been shown to have some helpful benefits. Now, you can't eat the full pound. You mean the, the big piece that I've got yeah, over that, there, yeah. that dark chocolate? Yeah, I saw I mean, that. I, You're lucky I haven't gotten into it yet, <laughs> but I, I eyed it already. But... You know, a little bit of chocolate is fine. As like red wine. Yeah. I mean, it's got wine. different, it's got different types. It's, it's not moving into excess. And right. when people start moving into excess, it's oh. typically because they're fearful, anxious, it feeds, stress, it feeds. But see, that's where I think people think, oh, alcohol, it chills me out. But alcohol chronically, especially in excess, actually depresses people. Right. And right. so, it's a depressant. you know. Yeah. It, that's a that's a bad cycle yeah. and habit to get into. Yeah, you know. But you know, I think that um, that when you understand that negative physiology and that you control it. Yeah. And here's the other funny thing. You a lot of times what we do is we ruminate over something that happened and how we should have handled it, and we go back and forth and we beat ourselves up because we didn't do this or we should have done that or whatever. Your body is going through that experience and all of the physiologic changes every time you think about it. It's doing it all over again. Exactly. Right. Because yeah. your body doesn't know the difference between the actual event and thinking about the event. That's mine. But yeah. So, you're, so the, <laughs> your body is bathed in stress hormones. Over Absolutely. and over again. Absolutely. And so here's the, the interesting part. If your thoughts can generate that negative physiology, guess what? Change your thoughts to positive ones. You change your physiology. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. It's simple. But not, not easy. necessarily easy. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, folks, that, that, you know, once you identify within yourself, um, what has become a, a, um, detrimental pattern in your thought process, then it's how do we get out of that detrimental thought process and move it to a positive and a very simple technique you can do is stop, <laughs> stop. And you literally say the word outside when you uh, out loud when you find yourself doing it, just say stop and say something positive. Reframe it, say something positive. 
when you find yourself thinking of something negative again, stop, reframe it in a positive. Because quite honestly, there's nothing that takes place in our life that is challenging to us that we can't phrase in a positive way. And I don't mean invalidating what you're going through because that's not going to help anybody. But, you know, it kind of goes to the adage of uh, what I what I speak about in a lot of lectures of if your partner, you get up in the morning and your partner says, how do you feel today? Or your best friend calls, how do you feel today? And you say, oh my gosh, you know, my back hurt all night and I'm exhausted because I couldn't <laughs> sleep. I couldn't find a comfortable position. Your body's going to go, okay, I can make that work for you. But if you say, you know what, thank you so much for asking. And in 10 minutes, I'm going to feel terrific. You're validating that you don't feel good in the moment without going into all the, you know, minutia of it. And yet you're giving your body a positive signal that it's okay to feel better. And, um, and so it's really important to validate how you're feeling. That's important. I don't want you to negate it and say, oh, I'm just fine. That's fearfully internalizing necessary events. And it doesn't mean that you went into your body at all. It just men, means that you're sitting on the outside, not willing to go in there. But if you can look at what's going on and put it in a positive context and validate how you're feeling in the moment in a positive way, then your body can pick up and begin moving into that positive stance. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the things in MD Wellness Solutions that every client gets is a little booklet. It's, I think, $3.99 on Amazon. It's called the Seven Day Mental Diet. You haven't shared that with me yet. Oh, okay. I, it's 20 minute, 20 minute read. Yeah. 20 minutes tops. The premise is that we spend a lot of time thinking about, and sometimes, oftentimes ignoring what we should put in our bodies as far as food and nutrients. Right. right. And we spend almost no time considering what we should put into our minds as nutrients. True. And so this diet is a challenge for us to not dwell upon negativity in any way, shape, or form for seven days. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have a negative thought because you, you know, something We're happens at them. work. Sure. And it pops up, you know, something, you know, somebody does something at work and I start thinking negative thought and I stop myself. And then I don't dwell on it and I shift and I, I you know, say something positive or just change my attention. Um, that's all you have to do. It's not that you don't have a negative thought. It's right. that you don't dwell on it. Because what right. we do as humans is we play the tape over and over and over again. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so this book challenges you to for seven days to do it. And what I learned, because I, I've, I've tried it, I can't say I haven't made seven days, but I've tried it. But what I learned most was just how negative I spoke to myself. I'm a positive person. You are. You know, I'm happy. Been. I'm like, you know, let's go. But I realized that my self-talk was terrible. And I would replay events. I would have play out scenarios in my head of what I'm going to say about something that didn't happen or what I should have said about something that happened a year ago. And the thing is, you can feel it in your body. Yeah. Because if it yeah. was an event that made you really angry and you're thinking about it again, you can feel it. And that's hormones and, and chemicals being released in your body, just yeah. like you were in that event. Yeah. And when I realized that, I big light bulb went off. I was like, whoa, yeah, I can change this. Right, right. And but the change occurs when you become aware, when you're willing to sit with yourself and become aware that there's something that needs to be changed. And that's what sounds like it's so great about the booklet is you know, the seven day challenge of how do you pay attention to yourself during the day? You know, life can get busy and, and we know it. Life gets busy and, and we are running around and, and we just feel like we have no time to breathe. 
the bottom line is it's time to breathe. It's time to look at how are you dealing with life in terms of your fear and anxiety about what's going on externally that you can't control. And how is that affecting you internally that you can control? And, and so it's just, you know, we can't control other people's thoughts. What we can control is the words that they speak to us, whether or not we're going to trigger to what they're saying. Right. Because that's our choice. Right. We've got that choice. And the moment that someone says some, something, we have the choice as to whether or not to be affected by it. And it's just one of those things that, you know, we're responsible for us. Yes. I can't, I can't control what you're going to say to me. No. And but you can be a smart, it. but I don't have to believe it. No, she can be well. a smart aleck at times. And I could sit and go, oh my goodness, you know, she just said that to me and I could cry like a baby. You probably just laugh. But, <laughs> but the point, the point is, is that I have the choice. I have the choice. You and can choose to be happy or you can choose to not be happy. Right. And, and, and it's your it choice. doesn't matter what's going on. Right. Exactly. Because exactly. I mean, and, not, and, and again, we're not negating some horrible things that happen Absolutely. that are, happen in, in, in the moment. And they're, they're terrible. They're terrible. We, but, we went through that uh-oh. circumstance right. a couple of weeks ago when we lost our friends. Right. Right. But day to day, we get to choose. And so we lost our friend mm-hmm. and we mourned her loss and we cried. We cried. You know? We were on the phone and we cried and it was rough. It was painful. Yeah. But now two weeks later, three weeks later, whatever it is, I rejoice having known her. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can hear her giggle. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, see her I can little hear her face giggle. and her little yeah. faces she makes and a little French accent she would throw out yep, sometimes. Yep, yep, absolutely. You know, and so, you know, now it makes me smile. Yeah. You know, because. Yeah. But I could choose to just continue to mourn and right. to be sad and, and all of that. Yeah. You know, but. Yeah. yeah and it's it, not that we don't still have moments. Oh, absolutely. Of the loss. But, absolutely. but we also have to. Um, you know, own, how are we going to, you know, the the thing is, we're going to go through the stages of grief, right? We decide how long those stages are going to be, right? Um, I think in many different ways. But the thing too, is that many times people get stuck, stuck, you know, and that changes your physiology and not for the better. Right. And so that's where we have a choice to say, dust ourselves off and say, okay, Right. It's time for me to to make some changes. Right. And the thing about the seven day mental diet is once you become aware, then you recognize just how bad, how often you are running some crazy tape in your right. mind. Right. And then you have the choice to say, you know what? I don't have to think that thought. Right. Right. I don't have to think that thought. And, and I think that the, the piece that comes in for me when, when we have things happen to us that are, are sad is, is after we lost our, our friend a couple of uh, weeks ago, um, I really sat with myself going, are you doing everything you can do to be in perfect health? Um, are you doing oh, what yeah. you need to do? Because it was an unexpected, very rapid. She know, was the healthiest one of the bunch. Out, out of all of us, a, a nutritional, you know, scientist for crying out loud. And, and, uh, and, and she was the healthiest out of all of us. And, and she was gone within a 12 hour period. Right. And so for me, yes, we were on the phone and we were crying and, and grieving and so forth. Um, but what it, what it, the blessing that I received was, hey, pay attention to your own health. Mm-hmm. You know, don't let fear, don't let anxiety of what's going on in the world right now and what's taking place externally define who you are in terms of being the best person that you can right. be. Right. Yeah. And the, the thing, too, is that there are things we can control. Yeah. Yeah. And do it. Yeah. And then there are things you just can't control. Yeah. Okay. And you have to let those go and you can let those go to a higher power 
or God or universe or whatever it is you however let you want to go in a positive. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean release it into yeah. the sense of that is not a problem that I can handle. Right. That's not a problem that I can solve. Right. And so I have to let that go to a higher power. Yeah. And I don't have to worry about it. Right. That's that's my philosophy. I that, agree. You know, I can't change it. I can't impact it. I can't do anything about it. All you can but, do is be you. Right. And yeah. and then, you know, there are things that I can do. Yeah. And so I do them. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Folks, thank you so much for joining me and Dr. Hall today on the Healing Within and Adventure Inside, because it's a, always an adventure. And it's, it's a lovely one, despite how much um, we may at times feel like we're in fear or we're in anxiety. Change how you're thinking. Rephrase what's taking place. Validate and rephrase. And thank you so much for being a part of this. I always look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much.